Good evening. Welcome to the County County Board of Commissioners meeting. Today is uh, Tuesday, March the 5th. If you're joining us virtually uh, to comment during the public comment portions of the meeting, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. After a moment of silence, we're going to ask Chuck Horton to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Please stand. Now, yeah, first item of business will be to approve the agenda. I would like to request a couple changes under section seven, item number two. I'd like to add, discuss, consider the lease agreement and contract ratification for the election building. And then number three under that section is uh, ratify the contract for construction services here at the courthouse. Make a motion that we approve the agenda with the additions. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Our next item is statements and remarks from citizens. This is for anything not on the agenda tonight. I'm Helen Haynes and I live in Chadwick subdivision in Alcone County. Um, this month marks one year. Ms. Haynes, I have to say, you can't speak at this tonight. It's totally inappropriate. You don't know my subject. It's not a zoning issue. If you're speaking about the ethics um, complaint that you made, it's not appropriate to speak to it while it's, while it's in front of the uh, administrative hearing officer. It's been over a year. Ma'am, it's not appropriate. You've made a complaint against this board. You can't speak to them about this issue. Anyone else? Anyone virtually? Thank you. Any statements or remarks from commissioners? I uh, would like to remind everybody the public comment uh, period is open uh, for Cold Springs Road closure. Uh, this form is on the website for your convenience to submit your comments. With that, we'll move to approval of minutes. We have a regular meeting for March 1st agenda setting meeting for March 29th, and also the town hall meeting for March 31st. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as submitted today. We have a motion second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Our next item is recognition of April as Oconee County Safe Digging Month, and uh, Commissioner Saxon is gonna read that resolution for us. Whereas thousands of times each year, the underground infrastructure in Georgia is damaged by those who do not have underground lines located prior to digging, resulting in service interruption, environmental damage, and threat to public safety. And whereas in 2005, the Federal Communication Commission 
designated 811 to provide contractors and homeowners a simple number to contact utility operators to request the location of underground lines at the intended dig site. And whereas the Oconee County Utility Coordinator Committee, a stakeholder driven organization dedicated to the prevention of damage to underground utilities in Georgia, promotes the national 811 notification system and Georgia 811 in an effort to reduce these damages. And whereas damage prevention is a shared responsibility and by using safe digging practice, the contractors and homeowners of Oconee County can save time, money, and help keep our infrastructure safe and connected. Therefore, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners of Oconee County, Georgia, I do hereby proclaim the month of April 2022 as Oconee County Safe Digging Month and encourage contractors and homeowners throughout the Oconee County to always contact 811 before digging. Safe digging is a no accident. Signed, John Daniel, 330, 2022. Did you want to get a picture on it? Okay. All And then we're going to move into our zoning matters. Our first item is rezone P21-0264 OS properties, uh, care of Milton Garland. This is OIP to B2. It's 1.85 acres at 1050 and 1060 Tallis Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, again, this is P21-0264 by Milton Garland Senior OS Properties, Inc., located just off of Monroe Highway. Highway 78 off of Tallis Street. Uh, these are the two parcels, subject parcels B01L, 002B, and 003B. Uh, they are currently zoned OIP. 
in the community village character area. And again, the request is to rezone uh, the property from OIP to B2 for a pet grooming and boarding facility. This is the concept plans you have in your application packets. This is a, a zoomed in version of that, a large version of that. These are the architectural images that were submitted with the application. And staff recommends conditional approval with the following conditions. Uh, one, two, and three are our standard conditions. And number four, uh, the use of the subject property shall be restricted to the proposed pet grooming and boarding facility. Uh, number five, the 50 foot landscape buffer adjacent to R1 zoning shall be vegetated throughout with evergreen plant material to form an opaque year round screen. A six foot tall limitation wood vinyl fence shall also be installed adjacent to said residential zoning. Number six, all kennels, pens, cages, runs, and other facilities for containment of animals shall be located within a fully enclosed building uh, with adequate provisions to ensure that noise and odors are completely contained within said building. And number seven, the architectural style of the proposed building shall be similar to the majority of existing buildings within Dickens Corner subdivision with a minimum roof pitch of 612 and 80% brick or stone facade on each side of the building. Planning Commission recommended approval with staff conditions uh, with uh, two exceptions. Uh, number six, uh, they wish to uh, add or within an outdoor run with a masonry wall matching the exterior materials of the building. And number seven, uh, striking the minimum roof pitch of six to 12. Okay, now we're here from the owner or the agent of the owner. I'm Ty Baggy. Uh, I work for Milton Garland. We regretfully couldn't be here today. Um, but we think this facility would be good for the area, all the, the welfare behind there, being able to serve as a boarding facility for animals uh, and also for grooming for the animals as well. And, um, we're, we're okay with the Planning Commission recommendations with the masonry outdoor runs and uh, striking away the minimum roof pitch. We can that 80% brick or stone, we're okay with those items. Um, and I don't know if any questions or- If we may have some in a minute, thank you. Mr. Powell, you want to speak? Mike Power. Uh, I own land uh, across 78 from this proposed project and uh, First of all, I know Mr. Garland, known him for years, does quality work. Uh, you can anticipate that he'll do what he's proposed to do. Uh, I think there's a demand for this service out there in the area. And I think it would be compatible with my property, part of that property, which is already zoned for a single family subdivision, 152 acres. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for this rezone? Anyone virtually? Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against? Anyone virtually? Okay. With that, we'll go ahead and close the public comment portion and open up to any questions from commissioners. Mr. Chair, I've got one. Uh, the back, could you go back to the, the uh, site plan? Um, top left corner that is kind of to uh, is that a, that's a drainage easement that goes through that adjoining lot. Yes, sir, that's correct. All right, and what is that structure there at the corner at the angle of that? What is that? That's an outlet structure for an existing detention pond. So the detention pond is there? Yes, sir. Okay. That was installed with this subdivision when it was created. Okay, so the, the house that has been constructed there, uh, so that detention pond, it belongs to that property owner. That's correct. Okay, so it's not part of the property owners association, anything like that. Th there may be an agreement with the, with the other parcels. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but okay. there may be. But I, I'm pretty sensitive about when water goes across people's property lines. I mean, make sure that it was 
properly done easement and that. Now, the planning commission has talked about an outdoor run, but the comment was about a masonry wall. What, what kind of describe what this run going to sure. look like? Sure. So my understanding is the run would be along this side of the building and there would it would be enclosed with a masonry wall instead of a fence that may have slats or lattices in it so that <coughs> it was a wall then enclosing that run area all right so the, as far as the surface of that run is there any requirements it be no. whatever right no sir no requirement. Right. so that run will have uh, as far as when you're looking at it from the street uh, what will the see when they a, a wall a wall okay and i think in the comments that was made at the planning commission that as far as the use of the outdoor run would be only during the daylight hours or during operation hours i believe they mentioned that was typical, typical. Uh, I, I don't know that that was um proffered as a condition or not but it was a, typically used then the animals pets were inside at night Any other questions? We'll entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve rezone P21-0264, OS Properties Incorporated, CL Milton, Geller, and Zinger, or up the office to B2, one, one plus eight, five acres, 1050 and 1060 Tallis Street, undeveloped with the seven conditions and the changes. Second. We have a motion to second approve rezone request P21-0264 with the seven conditions as modified by the planning commission. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Our next item is rezone request P22-0011. This is Victoria Duckworth. It's AG to AR, it's 5.16 acres at 2331 Snows Mill Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, again, this is uh, P22-0011, Victoria Duckworth owner, uh, located off Snows Mill Road. This is the aerial and showing the subject parcel of A0406C. It's currently zoned AG in the rural places character area. And again, the request is a rezone from AG to AR in order to subdivide the property into two two acre lots and construct a secondary entrance to Lane Creek subdivision. This is the concept plan that you have in your application packets enlarged. These are the architectural images that have been proposed. And staff recommends conditional approval with our standard uh, three conditions. And then number four, uh, if the proposed lots are developed as part of Lane Creek subdivision phase five, no structure shall be installed within 40 feet of the rear property line lot of lots one and two. A 20 foot wide vegetative buffer shall be installed along the rear property lines of lots one and two in keeping with other lots along the perimeter of Lane Creek subdivision. Said buffer shall be shown in preliminary plat and site construction plans for Lane Creek Phase Five. Planning Commission recommends approval subject to staff uh, recommendations. Now we're here from the owner or the agent of the owner. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott Haynes. I work for WA Engineering. I uh, reside at 2081 Clot Delta Road, Bogart. Um, what piece brings before you tonight is a request to uh, rezone the five acres as mentioned in the staff's report at 2331 Snows Mill Road from AG to AR. Uh, this is upon behalf of Mr. Chris Hill and Mr. Michael Phelps of Hillbrook Homes. We are seeking this approval to permit the creation of two two acre lots uh, and an access for snows, from Snows Mill Road to the fifth phase of Lane Creek Plantation. The proposed location of the new access, which was depicted on the plan, um, submitted before you would conform to Lane Creek's original 1999 conditions of approval, which identified an emergency entrance and exit, which at that time was to Rogers Road, which is unapproved. Um, this approval of this request would allow re relocation of that access to Snows Mill Road. The two proposed lots would meet current area and frontage standards for the AR district and our access from that uh, proposed Lane Creek entrance. Um, 
both of these lots would be developed as single family homes in keeping with what has already been done in the Lane Creek subdivision. Uh, we have reviewed the conditions that were placed on uh, this request, part of the Planning Commission's recommendation for approval and also staff's report. Uh, we have no uh, desire to, to ask for any modification of that language. Um, with me tonight is Mr. Michael Phelps, representing Hillgrove Homes. Either of us would be happy to answer any questions you might have at the appropriate time and would humbly ask for your approval vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Powell. Mike Power again. I'm the owner of Lane Creek Plantation, and uh, I'm happy to say that this will make a lot of folks that live in Lane Creek Plantation happy. Amen. It will give them an excellent uh, exit entrance in the back uh, that we haven't had, and it's a far superior uh, exit and entrance in the back than was originally proposed a long time ago uh, on uh, Rogers Road. So uh, I'm in favor of it. Uh, I've uh, approved the homes that would go on those additional lots and uh, we'll continue to uh, monitor everything that's done there. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Phelps. Good evening. Uh, thank you for your time. My partner, Chris Hill, couldn't make it today. Um, but I'm a co-owner of uh, Hillwood Homes, and um, we're planning on, uh, we're already building, we're getting started houses in the first part of Lane Creek, some existing lots there. And uh, we're just looking forward to the opportunity to hopefully continuing that to the back. And I think this would be a great uh, back entrance and back exit, back exit way out of the neighborhood. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak for the rezone? Anyone virtually? Does anyone wish to speak against? Anyone virtually? With that, we'll go ahead and close the public uh, comment portion of the meeting and open up any questions from commissioners. I guess one I got, this would, this will be part of Lane Creek as far as covenants and that type of thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Good. You got anything? That was kind of a point, but Jack, could you put up the condition to make sure I'm understanding uh, on the floor? Uh, what I'm hearing is these two lots are going to be part of Lane Creek subdivision. That's correct. All right, but your number four, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. It says if lots are developed as part, is there an option that they're not part? Well, I, to my knowledge, uh, the property hasn't closed yet, so we left that option there. Okay, so if it's not part of Lane Creek, does the, that requirement of number four go away? That's correct. They could develop the two lots. Okay. So as far as all the buffer and all that, would just be the normal buffers? That's correct. Okay. All right. Just want some clarification because sure. when it said if, you know, <laughs> Uh, I just want to make sure. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve rezone P22-0011 for Victoria M. Duckworth, uh, AG to AR, uh, 5.16 acres at 2331 Snows Mill Road, residential. With the four conditions. With the conditions as presented. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve rezone P22-0011 with four conditions. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. The next item is parents request uh, P22-0008. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, again, this came before you at your last meeting, so this is uh, P22008. Uh, I will show you the amended application uh, that shows a different um, architectural standard than what was previously submitted. This was, this was developed by the applicant and provided to us, uh, and I do believe um, you have in your packets and your memo that I forwarded to you earlier, uh, the uh, agreement between the HOA of Windy Creek and the property owner, uh, this does uh, meet everyone's standards. Uh, so with that, you were um, 
uh, you uh, uh, it's to you now to determine the uh, the outcome of the setback of that uh, that request. So we've already had the public hearing on this. So it's just if you have any questions, the owner of the property's here, and everybody's seen the documents. So we have any questions? Okay. The only question I had from last time, and John, you might be able to answer this, but it goes to environmental health, just to make sure that. Um, all the permits will go through and make sure the environmental health. We will. We will send that to environmental health. And actually, the applicant did provide um, the septic tank uh, a previous approval. Um, and so that is um, in the front yard. And so maybe there is some repair area in the front or in the rear. But either way, it will be required to be reviewed by environmental health. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? We'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve variance P22008, Penny Upper Heart to reduce the year, the year and yard setback for an accessory building greater than 144 square feet, plus or minus 0.98 acres, 1040 Creek Bridge Drive residential with the one condition. Second. We have a motion and second to approve variance request P22008 with the condition. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Next item is variance number P22-0009. This is to reduce the rear setback on the accessory building greater than 144 square feet. It's 1.02 acres located at 3381 Madison Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners again, P22-0009. This is the aerial and tax parcel C05C022. It's currently zoned AR in country estates. And this is the concept plan that you have uh, in your packet showing the existing shed 14 feet and six and a half feet on the property line. This is uh, the photos of the existing shed. And again, the property owner is requesting a variance uh, to UDC section 410.01C2 and UDC table 4.1 to reduce the rear setback from 40 feet to six and a half feet and the side yard set back from 15 feet to 14 feet for the existing shed. Staff recommends approval uh, and with two conditions uh, that the reduction shall be as stated to six and a half and to 14. Thank you. And now we're here from the owner or the agent of the owner. I only got shed early. Um, I didn't realize the requirement. Um, but uh, it's a pre existing shed. Uh, as you see, it's six and a half feet. Uh, the neighbor to my uh, west uh, is fine with it. He, he asked if he wanted to provide a letter of uh, support. Uh, I didn't think it was necessary. But, uh, and for the rear setback, uh, there's a fence in between, um, according to uh, the policies and regulations. So I just ask that we can bring the step back closer so I don't have to move the fence forward. And the, the main purpose of it is if it's 40 feet forward of that, uh, you, the purpose of the yard is really to have some room for my kids to play and uh, it would kind of put it in between. So it would be really beneficial for the two yards. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak for? Does anyone wish to speak against? Anyone virtually? Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and close the public comment portions and open up to any questions from commissioners. Okay. Um, Mr. Britton, I've got a question for you. Did, um, and you can stay back there, it's all right. Um, as far as the location of the building, did you check with environmental health to make sure that it's not gonna impact your reserve area or your existing? Septic system. Okay. Um, Mr. Herring, is there a permit going to be required for this? Yes. We, okay. yeah, after, after this is approved, if it's approved at uh, this location, then we would require that they provide us a permit. And then it would be routed to environmental. Oh, okay. 
Any other questions? We'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve rezone B22 0009 as submitted. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve variance request P22 0009. With two, that is with conditions. Yes, with two conditions. conditions. Yeah. So, motion to approve variance P22 0009 with two conditions. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Next time to discuss and consider the lease agreement and contract ratification for the ward building. Daniel? So I'll, I'll talk about the contract ratification first. Um, one of the transactions will be a section 1031 like kind exchange. For their files, they have to have a contract. Uh, the only thing you're doing on that is approving John signing it. It specifically says it's subject to all the terms of the bid proposal and what they said. So in effect, all we're doing with the contract ratification is we're just saying, yes, we understand we're participating in a section 1031 exchange at no cost to the county. So other than that, there's no difference than what you've already approved on the sale of that. Um, on the ward building, we have a lease um, approved by the, uh, the, the purchaser slash landlord um, that would be at $2,000 a month for a year with some options to renew on the, um, uh, we pay insurance and taxes um, on the elections building, uh, it's $3,000 a month, same general terms, but we have some specific provisions in that during the term of the lease, the landlord cannot for any reason come on the property without written, prior written consent to protect the, uh, the, sanctity of the elections. Um, both leases have been gone over by the attorneys on the other side. They were they were very gracious at accepting all the changes that I, I told them we had to have because the county is a tenant and uh, they're they're ready to be approved and I, I recommend approval on both leases. Okay. Any questions? Do we have any public comment? Anyone virtually? All right, they wouldn't, with that, we'll entertain a motion. We can do both leases at one motion if you'd like. So I a motion to approve the, uh, um, let's say the pro forma contract and the, uh, the leases on the ward building and the uh, um, elections Election. building. Okay, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the contracts and the lease agreements for the election building and the war building. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you, motion carries. The next item is a contract for construction services it's for the courthouse. As you remember, we did a, a budget amendment uh, a couple months ago. And uh, so they're gonna present the contract based on the dollar amount it has to be approved uh, by the board of commissioners. So Alex. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, we have a contract for your approval for Bain Development Group through Gordian. Uh, this is to finish the second and third floor of the courthouse expansion to a white box standard. So basically putting up the drywall, putting down some flooring, doing a drop ceiling, putting some extra lights, electrical to match code. Uh, the budget for this is $200,000 and this contract is for $189,709.88. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for Alex? Okay. Any public comment? Anyone virtually? Thank you. We'll entertain a motion then. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the contract. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Does any commissioner wish any item to be removed from consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the consent items as presented. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We do not have need of an executive session. So, Commissioner Saxon. Motion adjourned. Second. Thank you. We are adjourned.